Hello and welcome to another Teach Me to Code uh, screencast. This is Charles Maxwood, and I've had a few people request um, how to deploy to multiple targets with Capistrano for the same uh, project. So you can see here that I have this project. It's teachmetocodeacademy.com. In fact, if you uh, go to teachmetocodeacademy.com, uh, you'll see something like this. If you're looking to learn Ruby on Rails, I'm going to be having going to be teaching a course from June 25th to September 19th. That's eight weeks. Um, and basically the idea is, is that you get a whole bunch of video content, you get written explanations, you know, so I, I've written up a whole bunch of material for it. Um, but you get the videos that demonstrate how to do Ruby on Rails. Um, you get direct access to me, uh, weekly Q&A webinars, and just a whole bunch of, uh, you know, feedback so that if you have any questions or any problems uh, implementing this stuff, then you can come to me. I'm also going to put together some uh, exercises for for people to do so that they can get a feel for how Ruby on Rails works. Um, anyway, so I've got this deploy set up so that what I can do is... Um, here, let me just kill this. So that I can just cap deploy and it will deploy it up to wherever I have it at, which in this case is teachmetocodeacademy.com. And so it gets all deployed. If we come over here, you know, any changes that we've made to the website are now updated. I just refreshed. So anyway, um, when you want to do multiple stages, like say staging and production, um, it's really simple, really, really simple. So what, what we need to do here is, for example, these um, these may actually be, you know, okay for production, but not necessarily for stage. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a task called production. And then we're going to indent that. These are actually global settings. In other words, they don't apply just a production so let's see so we're gonna go ahead and move these up here and then oh, this one too in fact it looks like all of this okay so deploy two might be a little bit different and let's say the users different as well so um, we're just going to move this right here. Uh, indent that. And then end. So what we have here now is we have this task that basically just runs through and sets these settings for us so that when we run deploy if we cap deploy now it's going to say well I don't I don't know anything I don't know enough to push it out you know you can see here it's it's executing but you know it, it's having some issues because um, it doesn't have any servers that match and the reason is is because this production here hasn't been run so if we go ahead and do this instead, cap production, deploy, then you can see here that uh, it works just fine. So that's more or less how you do the, the multi-stage deployment. It's really kind of simple. Um, there isn't good doc documentation that I've found on it though, but anyway, that's what you do. So you can create another task that's stage. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that really quickly. Um, whoops. All right. 
So now we have. Whoops. All right. Undo. All right. He's still getting used to him here. So anyway, let's change this to stage. So. Stage. And then let's say that this is stage.teachmetocodeacademy.com. And if you want to change the user here, you can. This is the user for the server. Um, one thing you'll notice is that if you've set up a deploy script um, and you haven't done any uh, authentication stuff with your server, then it should be prompting you for a password here. So if we do a cap stage deploy, it's going to have a problem because uh, stage.teachmetocodeacademy.com isn't actually defined anywhere. In other words, it's not in DNS. Yeah, it can't resolve it. So anyway, I'd have to set all that up, but it would actually deploy it as I've specified right here um, should I decide to do that. And that's something that I may do in the future um, just so that I can, you know, stage my changes before I actually push them to production. But it's not as critical since I'm the only developer that works on that website at the moment. So anyway, um, that's that's more or less what you need so if you're trying to deploy to multiple stages you just set this up and as long as you can resolve it via DNS or if you put IP addresses in here it'll work just fine so anyway so that that should get you going if you have any questions then leave a comment on teachmetocode.com and I will be happy to answer those. And in fact, let's look at the topics real quick and see what we've got coming up here. So a star rating system in Rails is something that that I think would be really interesting to build in. So uh, that may be something that I go ahead and do in the future. So anyway, um, in fact, a lot of these are really kind of cool. Real-time Rails is something that I just heard about on the Ruby Rogues podcast. So um, I'll probably be doing uh, some of these in the future. Um, I've also been playing with Cassandra, which is a column database. So if you're interested in that, put, pick that up as well. And if you want to learn Ruby on Rails, then go to teachmetocodeacademy.com and sign up for the course. Thanks. Need expert help with your Ruby, Rails, or Sinatra application? Give me a call. My phone number is 801-367-6164. Or you can email me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. Thank you. Do you want to learn Ruby on Rails? Then sign up for my six-week course at teachmetocode.com slash Rails course. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www dot newrelic dot com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic, including 37 Signals, AT and T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. That was wonderful. Bravo! I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good. It though. could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. I was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!